Archeon is my absolute favorite plugin for building, and I want to teach you how to use it. You will need to become a patron to Arcaniacs to get access to this plugin. I'll provide a link to his Patreon in the description. Once you have it ready on your server, we can start. This whole tutorial, I'll be covering just the Revolve command, but there are a couple variations on it, and I'm going to try to cover as many of the different applications as I can. First, let's start with the most basic function of the Revolve tool. How it works is you're going to make a selection around whatever shape that you want to revolve. So I have this shape. Let's say I wanted to rotate it 90 degrees four times in order to complete the shape in a circle. Well, instead of doing copy, rotate 90, and paste three times, I could just run the revolve command and take care of all of that with one command. I have to stand in the center of wherever I'm revolving around. So this shape in my selection will now revolve around me. Also, just note this tool always ignores air. So if you have a bunch of air selected mixed in with the blocks, don't worry about it. The command completely ignores it. So while standing here, I'm going to revolve and then I'm going to enter an amount. This time, I just want to complete the shape as if I were doing copy, rotate, paste. So I'm going to do it four times around. And when I do that, you'll see it's rotated once, twice, three, and four times till it makes a complete revolution. And then we get this ninja star. Very cool. Whatever number you enter is how many times it will revolve around, which makes it a great way to bypass the copy, rotate, paste. We can also use it to generate a full circle. And for this demonstration, I actually need to make a slight adjustment. So I want this circle to go all the way around my star as a backdrop, but I am going to have to remove this temporarily. I should have done this first, but I'm gonna remove that temporarily and make this the base because I don't want to revolve that calcite there. I'm gonna stand in the center once again, and I want this to go all the way around. So instead of just doing a low number like four, I'm going to make it go 1000 times around just to be sure it's filling in all the spaces. So let me do that. And you'll see it will rotate a thousand times in a circle and fill it all in so it just looks like a naturally generated circle, but it is done with whatever block pattern you have selected. That's the basic function of Revolve, but you can also change it up a bit by adding more numbers to this command. I'm going to select this one piece of stone and we'll play around with it a bit and see what we can do. If you wanted to Let's say revolve only part of the way around, but you want to make a complete shape. You can do that by adding a starting and ending point. So the starting and ending point will be in degrees. Think of a circle, it's 360 degrees around. So we're going to start at zero and end at, I don't know, let's say 170, a very random number. If I do that, it's going to start there at zero revolve all the way around till it gets to 170 and stop. And you can make those numbers be anything you want. So if I wanted it to start further up, if I wanted it to start at 90 and end at 360, then we can do that. And it will go three quarters of the way around, starting at the 90 degree mark. And it's always going to go to the right. The last number we can enter is for height difference. So let me start with one of these commands again. Actually, I wanted to do 0 to 360, and I'm going to add a height difference of 10. So if I do that, it's going to revolve one time all the way around from 0 to 360, and then the starting point and end point are going to have a 10 block difference. So that's what the height difference is. It's for the entire thing. Now, if I wanted this to go around multiple times and go way up, because as you see, it is only one revolution, I'm going to undo that, and this time I want it to go up 10 times, so that would be 3,600 degrees, and I want to have a height difference of 100, so then each time it revolves, it's going to have a height difference of 10 between each one. And there you'll see what that does. It's revolved 1,000 times from 0 to 3,600 degrees with a height difference of 100 blocks from the end point to the starting point. And you'll notice there's a lot of gaps in here. That's just because the amount was too small for that many revolutions. So instead of doing 1000, I would have to pick a much higher number in order to fill in those gaps. 
It's very useful if you want to create just a very quick spiral staircase. You can select any number of blocks in here, or even a pattern if you would like. And as long as you have the height difference, you can really easily make a spiral staircase. If I did something like 0 to 720, height difference of 20, that's going to go around twice with 10 blocks in between each one, and you can get something like that. And remember, you can always change the center points based on where you're standing. So if I stood in a different spot, you'll get something that looks a little different. It also makes some interesting shapes because they're all connecting to the same point. Honestly, there's a lot of things you can do with this command. I already somewhat showed this to you earlier with a circle and ninja star, but typically I like to use this command if I want to evolve a complex shape, something like this. I look at this as being the side pattern that I want to make a complete circle out of. So what I'll do is put it inside a selection, just like so. And then I'm going to stand wherever I want the center point to be. That's important. You got to remember that you're standing in the center of your revolution, wherever it is. And then we're just going to do the standard revolve and amount to fill that in. And here is how that looks. It's a really quick way to make complex pillar designs, and I use it all the time for this. Now to introduce some flags, and we can get into even more ways to use this command. First thing I'm going to show you is the minus R, or the reverse flag. It's pretty obvious what this one does. Instead of revolving everything clockwise, it's going to go Wittershins, aka counterclockwise. I just need an excuse to use that word. Wittershins. Even though it's very obvious what it does, I will demonstrate with another command. I'm adding a height difference because you can clearly see that it's rotating to the right, and then when we add the minus R, it is rotating to the left. And with them combined, you get another very interesting pattern that I'm sure could be used for something. Normally, when you run this command, you're going to get a circular shape like that. However, if you want to make a polygon shape when you revolve instead, then you can use the minus P flag. And the biggest difference with this is when you add the minus P flag, you're going to have to change your revolution amount to be the number of points in your polygon, if that makes sense. So if I did a revolution of 5 with the minus P flag, it should create a pentagon, as you can see here. If I did a revolution of 3, it should create a triangle. Oh, but that's not all. We can also make even more interesting shapes by adding more revolutions to it. So I'm going to stand somewhere over here, and I'm going to revolve just like last time. We'll do five times, and this time we're going to go around twice. Revolve around itself twice. So 0 to 720 degrees, minus P for polygon, and this should create a perfect star. Look at that. How cool is that? And if you really want to get fancy, you could create an illusion to a star by adding a height difference, and then it will only look like a star from the top. But as soon as you look at it from the sides, there's all kinds of fun possibilities with this command. In fact, I did go back and experiment some more because I was curious what other shapes I could make with this. So I have the star in the top right, the same one that you saw before. But the others, I experimented with different revolution numbers and different starting shapes. You'll see the starting shape highlighted in gold and also a gold block where the center point of the shape is. Coming up with these shapes gave me flashbacks of using a spirograph growing up. I don't know if you've ever used that, but for some reason this reminded me of it. And just for fun, I wanted to see what it would look like taking this larger shape and adding some shadow to it. I don't know how practical this would be for an actual build, but it is a lot of fun to play with. This next flag was actually a bug for the polygon flag that Arcaniacs decided to leave in because I found some interesting uses for it. So you're welcome for that. And it is the minus S flag. And how this one works, it's going to be easier if I just demonstrate. We're going to revolve this around like we would a normal circle. And we're going to go one revolution around. And I'm going to add a height difference to this one so you can see it a bit better. And then I'm going to add the minus S flag. And what it stands for is it's going to 
connect every revolving point to the start of your selection. So basically to wherever your selection is. So if I do that with one block, it's going to revolve a circle, but each section is going to connect back to the beginning, which creates this straight edge along here. I thought it was interesting because when you do it one time like that with the height difference, it almost looks like a piece of her propeller. So you could use it for something like that. I'm sure there's other things you could use it for, but it's just a very interesting shape that you can generate. In here, just for fun, I'll show you what it looks like when I do it a bunch of times. If I have a height difference of 100, and we have it going up 10 times. I probably need to revolve it more than that though. Let me fix that. And here is the result of that. Like I said, I think it mostly looks like some kind of blade. I'm sure you could find some use for it. I want to show you one other cool trick you can do with the minus S flag, but I'm going to show it to you using the revolve brush. And the main difference between the revolve brush and the revolve command is that the brush, you can click on a spot to revolve around it versus having to stand there yourself. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to first pick a spot for this glass and I'm going to select it. That is important. You do still have to have your block selected that you want to revolve. And then I'm going to create the brush using any weapon or tool. And to create it, I'm going to type arc brush revolve, and then we're going to enter the normal revolve command. This time I want to revolve just 10 times, and we'll do a minus S because this is part of my demonstration for how to make this cool thing, and we'll do that. Now that my brush is made, I can right click anywhere, and wherever I click will be the center point. So if I click here, that will be the center point. If I undo, if I click there, that will be the center point. So it's just nice if you don't want to have to fly around and stand in that spot. If you do want to change the revolve command you're using, you do have to remake the brush using that command. It's exactly the same as the regular revolve, including all of the flags. Like I said, the only difference is how you're setting the center point. So as for this cool effect with that command that I showed you with the revolve 10 minus S, I'm going to click somewhere randomly out here, maybe there. And I'm gonna click somewhere else, maybe like right there. And I'm creating this really cool starburst effect. If I don't like how close some of these are together, I can remake it. So once I get this starburst effect, and I know this is kind of big, I could, I could go a little bit smaller by clicking a little closer to that. Once I have that, I'm going to select this whole thing just like so. And now I'm going to rotate it on its side. So I'm going to cut this and see if I can get this right the first time. I'm going to rotate 0, 90 degrees, and paste, oops, minus AS. Okay, I almost got it. Let me try again. Okay, finally. So once I get it on its side like this, and while I still have the whole thing selected, that's also important. So you still have to have your blocks selected if you want to revolve them. Now I'm going to very carefully take my brush and click on the center point of this, and it's going to revolve that 10 times around itself, and watch what it does. It's going to mess up. You know why? because I wasn't supposed to have the minus S flag on it at this point. That was totally my fault, so let me undo it. This time we're going to remake the brush, if I can find that command, and take out that minus S flag. Maybe I'll do it 15 times around instead of just 10. Now with the brush without minus S, if we click in the middle, it's going to create kind of like an explosion slash firework. I just thought it was a really interesting, quick way to make like a firework. If you wanted to make this glow at night, you wanted to add some air blocks mixed in to make it look a little more messy. Oh, the possibilities are endless with this, but doesn't that look cool? It's such a simple way to create this effect. A word of warning though, when using the arc brush, just be very careful you're clicking where you intend to. Don't accidentally be clicking way over here. 
and making a mess in your world because from past experience, I've had it happen where I accidentally ran the revolve command in the wrong place and it messed up my build and I wasn't able to undo it. And who knows what caused that? Maybe the newer versions of Archeon don't have that problem, but it could just be it just couldn't keep up and it wasn't able to undo it. I don't know, but just be very careful with it because it can wreak havoc on your build if you're not. All that being said, I think this is one of the better commands with its abundant practicality. I've used it for so many different things from pots to mushrooms to even that massive carousel you may have seen me build. Even if it did mess it up at one point, it still saved me a lot of time. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you're interested in seeing more Archeon tutorials, I do have a playlist that I'm adding to. But that is all for now for this one. Have a good day and have fun building.